However, so if you always wanted to understand what some of the biggest investors are talking about or what arguably the most celebrated investor in the world talks about in his annual letter, it came out over the weekend on Saturday evening this time around or Saturday late night if you will and I think uh, we, we, we made you hear uh, two global uh, experts all through Sunday and Monday uh, in, in terms of Monish Babra and Guy Spear but somebody who's been following uh, what Warren Buffett does very very closely and he's a celebrated investor in his own right Mr. Ramdev Agrawal needs no introduction with us in our studios to, to make sense one of the preachings of Warren Buffett if you will and hopefully give us some nuggets of his own as well. Ramdev, so good having you in the studios. Thanks so much for joining in. So nice to be here. Yeah. Okay. You know, before we talk about yeah. the Buffett letter, when I go to your investment floor, I see a big picture of Warren Buffett. I wonder if you ever meet him, what will be your first reaction? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be speechless. You know, I, actually, I uh, I can actually reach him. Okay. So I, I keep thinking, what will I speak to him if he gives exactly. half an hour, one yeah, hour? Exactly. So I don't know what to ask him, you know. Why is he buying emission stocks? You know, I mean, he has written so much. Yeah. Literally everything is in the press and yesterday I believe the three hours interview was there in the public. Yeah. So I think she must have asked literally everything. I saw some snippets of that. So clearly, I mean he is so open. There is nothing left uh, uh, which uh, somebody else has not asked. Uh -huh. You know and uh, he has been so painfully in various forums, various universities, uh, interactions with the students. I think what we should do is uh, this time we are going to yes. Omaha. We must seek you know a day before or something some kind of time for Indians. I mean, a lot of Indians go now yes, yes. Uh, as a group. Uh, and he has uh, celebrated Mr. Ajit Jain. <laughs> he <laughs> might a big be, way. Uh, in this big way. So well, I yes. think, uh, again, he has said, you yes. know, if you have to, uh, uh, what he said? Swap. Uh, yeah, swap. Uh, please don't, don't, don't avoid doing the trade. Huh. He said, do the trade. If yeah. you, have to, you have to swap one guy, yeah. please swap Ajit for me. Yeah. yeah, you know, but what Warren Buffett says, besides, of course, his view yeah. on individual stocks, companies, etc., it's like going to a dietitian. You know what not to do. You know not to have fatty foods. And he says, you know, make most of it when the world is in panic. That's mm. the time you need to buy, and that's mm. something that you also have been propagating. Mm. There's nothing new in that. Uh, do you sense in the current day market that time and opportunity is gone, or do you think? There could be some time when in our markets we could see some sort of a panic bottom being hit. Again, you are anti Buffett, you know. I'm not anti Buffett <laughs> at all. You're asking, you're starting with the you know, question of timing the market. I mean, just forget this. I mean, this is where exactly the investing ends. You know, the moment, uh, I mean, actually it is getting killed because of this timing issue. You know, is it the right time? Is it the right time? You know, I mean, see, you've got to be avoiding the complete, uh, what do you call, extremes when the market reaches. And it reaches in 7, 8 years once it reaches and from there market collapses. Index collapses, everybody's portfolio also collapses. We are not in that kind of situation. By various measures, whether it is IPOs, whether it is, uh, whether it is a valuations, whether it is a earnings uh, boom, whether it is some kind of uh, excesses in some segment or here, the, I don't see it here. I mean, our market cap GD is about 75-80%. Slightly uh, in uh, this recent rally, it has gone up from 70 to 80%. But I don't see that kind of euphoria, you know. I mean, one of the broad measures I see for euphoria to happen is then when market cap to GDP rises to more than one and a half. It was 1.8 mm. in 2007 when you collapsed. Mm. Uh, our GDP was 45 lakh crores and market cap was 75 lakh crores. What more do you want, you know? I mean, 30p uh, and uh, all sorts of uh, excess were there. Uh, companies were valued, you know, uh, company somebody announced uh, 5,000 acres uh, land acquired land somewhere yeah. and suddenly that stock will be up 10-20%. That kind of madness was on, you know. When the stocks started moving uh, away from the earnings, you know, on some imaginative thing, page views, land bank, uh, those are the signs uh, of, uh, you know. So we are far away from that, you're saying? At least we, in India, we don't have uh, mm. that kind of froth. In US, mm. like Uber, so yesterday yeah, I think yeah. uh, uh, Goldman Sachs or somebody uh, put a sell and it was it fell promptly five six percent so there there is no earnings they are raising money left right and center of course it's a wonderful model it's a it's a innovation uh, for the maybe of the century or something like that but yet stock market is about the earnings we must not forget I don't know see you can have a wonderful story but you need the numbers narrative and numbers must go together yeah. the moment w when the excesses happen when the story is wonderful number is yet to come so you can build a stories you know yeah that's no, why I'm i asked because price also you can't be blind to. Uh, no, you cannot yeah, be you cannot yeah, be yeah, investing exactly. is about all the price but yeah. uh, at the same time 
uh, if every day you keep asking on every 5% more whether is it done is it done then when do you do it in a bad market you say it will collapse further so don't buy and in a slightly warm market you say is it done so neither you want to buy in daytime neither you want to buy on the night time so you just stay on the side go and buy your fixed income you know Uh, so what an interesting statistic that somebody told me over the weekend was also that since we were talking about Uber that for the first time in many years the number of people traveling by subways mm. has actually come down in the US and a, a lot of people attributed to models like Uber as well mm. but Ramdev yes. you know if we look at the letter mm. i think in in many ways in in his tribute or in his yeah. mention about Jack Bogle or otherwise yeah. Warren Buffett lays out and he he's devoted three pages to this 10 decade old bet as well about passive investing it however ends here yeah. my question to you is does that model work in a country like india right now I attribute more to passive investing mm. and less to active investing would that be different for a yeah. country like india and for indian investors yeah so uh, you're asking absolutely right person because i spent 4 years of my life trying to build a passive uh, uh, etf company Good in mutharal sal amc hmm. and uh, i mean we are so ahead of time i mean the whole concept is uh, uh, kind of uh, not taken off in india and maybe another 10 20 years because active managers almost 70 to 75% of active managers are doing well yes because you have a 50% management block see unlike in us and all here you have 50% management block which will not perform well and at their cost or retail see how the uh, market is divided 50% is with the management 20% is with the uh, say about one third one third between in indian uh, institutions mutual funds and retail i mean uh, i think uh, uh, fi is at about 20% and di is about 17 and retail is about 13 14 or something like that so uh, fi and uh, di are the i would say smart lot in aggregate we are talking about all in aggregate sure compared to your retail and promoter group right so so long as this promoter group is very large I think most likely uh, active managers will do very well. Let's look at the site actually where Buffett has uh, placed his bet, and you may want to make note of that, Ramdev. The site is longbet.org. Uh -huh. This is a site on which Buffett has gone public, and we'll put up that you know graphic just to mention that where Buffett has really placed his bet. There you go. The site is on this bet called longbet.org. It's a one million dollar wager. and buffett has openly challenged that best of the hedge funds on a 10 year basis they will underperform the s&p ramdev the reason why fund managers are struggling mm. to outperform benchmark ind indexes because a there is a charge there is charge mm. in terms of fee. there is a fee two only fees there fees there. and b markets are becoming efficient that could be the situation for indian mm. markets as well going uh, forward yeah so clearly one is the fee structure second is first thing is where you are talking about in us it's a very very competitive in the sense that you are competing with yourself fundamentally the all the active managers are competing with themselves and they are brilliant lot so obviously 50% are likely to do worse than other 50% in in aggregate in aggregate okay second in the, this uh, hedge funds by very nature they are not seeking the highest returns they are seeking, they are not long only hedge funds they are long short now when you do long short uh mostly you are what you are avoiding is the comp uh, less drawdown i mean when the market goes down by 50% i mean this is my limited understanding of hedge funds but what i have seen they want to be long as well as short and market neutral kind of thing so uh, in that process they might earn lower in terms of return but uh, but volatility in the return will be less that is the whole objective of uh, being hedged so uh, so uh, earning less than on a say 10 year basis uh versus active manager or uh, say an index uh, the hedge fund guy is not doing so well uh, probably is uh, is understandable and uh, uh, and on top of it this uh, 3 4 5 percent fee which finally comes because fee is charged when the performance is there when there is no performance there is no punishment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that really is a uh, problem of uh, hedge fund uh, downside is uh, zero and upside is you participate all the way and 2 percent fee in any case uh, comes in so i think the excessive fee charging uh, from the pool is the uh, source of underperformance and the competition you know after making fun of the airline industry for years now buffett finally has bought into airline stocks and i was watching uh, charlie yeah. munger on yeah. global network yes. and he said that we criticized railroads also couple of years ago but now 
the airline industry is getting consolidated. So you're feeling secretly happy that you bought airline stocks and Buffett has bought <laughs> airline stocks after you. <laughs> I see the economics uh, probably in both the countries are different, but the driving force in uh, airline, I mean, for us was the uh, lower uh, cost of fuel mm. and uh, again consolidation here and one player, see we didn't buy so much airline as much as Indigo. You know the superior airline and the kind of economics, the low cost uh, uh, economics and uh, zero capital employed on the plane side, working capital side negative. So negative capital employed across and the growth uh, and uh, level at reasonable price and the size of portion is so massive even now. But uh, we didn't make money. So to our record, we have not made money. We have lost money in Indigo. So, uh, but the question is, Ramdev, yeah. is, is the state set for aviation to make money in India? I mean, if crude and Warren Buffett, I think, uh, or Munger, one of them said that mm. they see very little probability of crude staying above 60 or above 65 for the first Anybody's period. prediction is of is, no use. Is no use. It's no use. I but mean, you I work with an assumption, anybody. right, in aviation. Yeah. I mean, so what's your assumption right now? No, see, the point is that uh, oil prices have passed through. Hmm. Uh, you are a customer on your behalf, I am flying the plane, I am hiring the plane, I am buying the fuel. The issue is in India, uh, low low fuel price means low ticket prices okay. and that means uh, high affordability. You know, so uh, if you, uh, Mumbai, Delhi, if it is uh, 4,000 bucks or say 5,000 rupees, so X number of guys will come. If you charge 10,000 rupees, then the number of people who can afford will drop, will <coughs> drop dramatically. But your capacity is already built and capacity charge, nobody is yeah. going to pay. Yeah. So, you know, your your operating leverage will work against you. So uh, it's a very crazy business. There are a lot of moving parts uh, in terms of uh, in terms of fuel price, in terms of uh, 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 you know uh, uh, other you know the competitive other forces, you know, the capacity utilization, at what price you are selling, uh, what are the seasons. So uh, there are lots of uh, moving parts. That at least we have found it difficult to make a predictable model. Sure. Uh, otherwise, cash flow is very good, profit is very good, managements are transparent, they are accessible. But uh, in investing, what you need is some kind of a grip over the uh, numbers. Which are you still I holding on to Interglobe? We are holding on to some. I mean, we have okay. definitely reduced the, the same, but and we have lost money to be. Mm. That's the bottom line. Bottom line. Mm. Okay, now Buffett has bought Apple. Yeah, I was just coming mm. to no, that. Yeah. I mean, he's given a logic saying that, look, I went to the park and I saw my granddaughter playing with an Apple and that's what I realized that Apple, f Apple is becoming a consumer brand now. Mm. But along with Apple, he also owns IBM. For a man who's always See, one of the one of the logic he has is that uh, which is not that much uh, counted in the investing here. Here we look at only the uh, uh, current earnings and earnings growth and the P multiple. These three triangle we do. There the buyback is very important part of it. If the free cash flow is there, massive free cash flow is there. Mm. You're buying at uh, there is a guaranteed thing like uh, as an active uh, activist or uh, uh, the fair deal in terms of distribution is guaranteed. Nobody will. They will force uh, uh, Tim Cook or anybody to buy back the shares. Mm. If the growth is not there mm. uh, from the current level, so that 40, 50 billion dollars, whatever they are earning, they will end up buying 5 percent, 6 percent of the stocks every year. So uh, if you are, uh, say, you are buying at, say, 10 p, so 10 percent is earnings yield. Another 5, 6 percent you yeah. can gain by way of uh, buyback. So buyback along with the modest growth and uh, uh, current uh, low p. See, these companies are also available at very yeah, low P cheap. multiple. Yeah. So, low P multiple, high free cash flow uh, yield and uh, very predictable buyback uh, opportunity. Mm. I mean, these are things which are working. In IBM also, the pitch is same that he will keep uh, buying back. Uh, I mean, he sees that and I think now IBM is also an all-time high. Mm. But what is happening is, I think the real part of the report is not in these, you know, I mean, yes, they are there. But the real thing is, first, if you, the moment you open, he gives that 50 year history of uh, performance. Yes. And there he talks about uh, the market matching the intrinsic value growth of the uh, company. So, intrinsic value has grown at 19.5% 19, 19 or something like that. The, and intrinsic value, he means uh, book value. First indicator of intrinsic value is the book value. So, book value over 52 years, when he bought it, I think 1967 or 65, I think 65, at $17, that time it was $17, now it is $172,000 uh, or something. Yeah. So, it has compounded at the rate of 19.2% mm. and the stock uh, in terms of listing has given about 20.5%. So, basically he is saying that market moves in tandem with the intrinsic value change. In the short run, we can be a bit confused, mm. but in the long run, your uh, uh, real growth in the market is absolutely maths. 
in the sense that it's a very predictable machine the pace of increase in your intrinsic value is going to the pace of uh, return, of your return in the stock that's uh, one message second is that right now now his net worth like last year has grown by 10 10 and a half percent or something mm. he is saying that now he has become so big that he cannot grow his intrinsic value by more than 10 or 11 percent that we realized four five years back when i was having the stocks in my portfolio i tried from all sides with best of my understanding can he do 20 percent mm. not 25 but 15 20 percent it looked almost impossible awesome. because his in intrinsic value cannot grow by uh, uh, more than 8 10 percent so uh, his ROE is also less than 10 percent right now the only thing left is that he is holding about 100 billion dollars worth of cash, cash or cash. cash equivalents that he is holding for quite some time now and he is hoping someday there is again going to be a complete collapse in the market that's why he has talked about two types of fears mm. okay there are two types of fear good fear and bad fear right. like mm. cholesterol <laughs> okay. Good cholesterol, bad, bad cholesterol. Yeah. So there are two types of fear. <clears throat> so what he says, you should you should not forget two things. First, widespread fear is your friend as an investor. Mm. Okay, which serves uh, which serves up bargain purchases. Second, personal fear. Uh, uh, second, personal yeah, per personal fear is your enemy. So public fear is your friend, is your friend. because it gives a, a cheap stock. Like demonetization. But yes. So he's saying the personal fear is your enemy. It will also be unwarranted. Hmm. You should not be fearful in the market. Fearful. What we started with. Hmm. See, if you're coming to a stock market, you're buying pieces of businesses. You should not be fearful. You must know underlying value. The problem comes from not knowing the underlying value. You are only focusing on the price. So if you know the what you are buying, you should be fearless, irrespective of the market levels. So what's that one conviction, Apple stock of India, so no, to see, don't get into there that. There is no because, Apple. No, no, there <laughs> are multiple apples because see, India is the India is the fastest uh, uh, growing, growing economy in the economy. world right now, and it is going to remain so for next 10, 15 years. Probably it will accelerate further from the current levels. So you will give birth to a lot of uh, growth companies in India. By very definition, you should have a lot of growth companies coming out of India. So you have to figure out. So G is there. G is going to be there. The issue is where is the queue? You have to differentiate between a good quality company and bad quality company and then growth is common factor. Once you do Q and G, I think that's where you'll be able to find some wonderful companies, whether it is private sector banks, whether it is oil companies, whether it is uh, auto consumer companies, companies, auto companies. Look at, I mean, your expected, Maruti is expected to deliver some 20% additional volume this month. I mean, tomorrow after yeah. it will come. So what I'm saying is that which country has this kind of a volume growth in cars? Yeah. And predictably for many years to come, and uh, they are putting up more and more capacity. China used to do, China and India both we used to consume about a million car, a million, less than a million car. In fact, India had a marginally higher consumption in 2000. Today, China does upwards of 20 million. We are doing two and a half, three million. So can we do, can we catch up in the next 10 years? There is no reason why we will not. So what I am saying is that opportunity and you see that industry structure, 45, 50 percent is one company. So, if I have to really put the Buffett thought and lift it up from why he's buying IBM and mm. why he's bought Apple, mm. let's look at what he's trying to address. He's trying to buy stocks when they are cheap. He's trying to buy companies where cash flow predictability would be huge. And he's trying to buy companies where you know that the future cash flows will be given back to shareholders. Yeah. I get a sense that Indian IT companies are embarking on that same pitch. These are good companies, yeah. well-run companies, going through a cyclical downturn. They're cheap. Uh, P multiples are just yeah. north of See, 10. I think uh, uh, Nikunj, I think one of the main thing is he always looks for the franchise, okay. unbreakable franchise. You know whether what yes. the edge, the companies with massive edge. You see, I mean everybody, every one of us have uh, 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 Apple iPhone. phones. Yeah. I mean this is the only one consumer product I have seen so uniform. I mean right from say Federer to Buffett to uh, you, me, or below my star. Everybody is the same phone, same color, same features, nothing. Very rarely you find any consumer company, consumer product like this. And it is addressing to almost entire planet Earth. I mean, of course, affordability is a different issue. But uh, it's a, and day by day, everything is coming into the phone. You would, you would I mean, if you um, uh, miss out on a wallet, it's okay. But don't miss out <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> True. The phone is your wallet true. as well. Yeah, I mean, first thing you go uh, wake up in the morning and try to figure out where is, is it visible is. somewhere. You, you, know? bought, you bought global <laughs> stocks in the past. Pardon? You bought global stocks in the past. If I yes. look at your declared portfolio in 2013 yes. or 14, you had Berkshire Hathaway. Yes. 
would you be looking at buying something like an Apple or an IBM going forward? Yeah, and not these these two stocks because maybe I uh, Apple I understand to some extent, but IBM I don't. Okay. So it's question of understanding and your conviction. And my style is QG. His style is Q uh, Q yeah. and P. This is that he wants to buy high quality uh, free cash flow with uh, with a very low price. Low valuation. Because see, for him he is sitting on hundred billion. For him to uh, get uh, to deploy that hundred billion he is the biggest large. challenge, mm. and still large. thirty forty billion is flowing. And now you know one of the big change he has done this time is he has said that marketable securities. See, we all think that Buffett is for holding forever if you buy anything. So he That's has right. categorized into two categories: marketable securities and permanent and permanently strategic investments. So he is saying that in marketable securities, please. Remove your uh, what you call misconception that these things are forever. So clearly, he is realizing because of internet or whatever over a period of time, the companies are becoming uh, obsolete, challenging, obsolete, obsolete and all. Yeah. So he has to check out some of the companies. So he is preparing the ground, and uh, in his operating manuals, I think he has made those changes. Uh, so clearly, that's another big one where uh, holding forever that notion is taken away as far as marketable securities goes. In marketable securities, you cannot do this. I mean, you have to you have to think about selling at some point of time. Every company has a limited life cycle, and at the peak of the life cycle, or close to the peak of the life cycle, if you are not uh, exiting, uh, you don't sense Indian IT is close to that stage, do you? Uh, not all the companies. I would. Th I mean, my understanding is limited. I am still struggling to figure out uh, how it will shape up. The next round, you know, they renewed two three times. This time, the digital economy, which is becoming bigger, uh, uh, how will they come back? Mm. Because see, digitization of the world is happening very rapidly. Uh, we will need a lot more services, uh, but I think probably different type of services than what we are doing right now. True. So that challenge is there. Mm. Uh, so you know, I, and I'll just again take a cue from the letter. I think one thing that he also did is speak about a lot of mm. global small acquisitions that his teams are doing. Mm. Praised a lot. His two fund managers too, mm. but he spoke extensively once again about his benchmark business, which is insurance, mm. and spoke about how while they have grown at such a uh, disproportionate rate, the growth is still to stay. I'm just trying to get your thoughts of whether you think because insurance is by and large a uniform business mm. across the globe, more or less. I mean, mm. you you would have the same model almost being replicated across. Mm -hmm. In India, the sector is just starting to you know kind of take take shape and form. Yeah. Do you think what Berkshire Hathaway did with its insurance business? Mm. Maybe not at the same rate, but some of the Indian insurance companies could do that. Is the market large enough for that? Yeah. So uh, in insurance, you have two types. One is life insurance, and second yeah, is sure. a, uh, casualty and general. property and all. Mm. So that general insurance, the casualty and property, we are yet to become big. I mean, most of them are in public segment. There mm. are some which are listed, Bajaj Alliance or something. But uh, that part is uh, very predictable and it's a simple business. You take the premium today. Uh, and uh, your claim ratio is there. You invest and make money. So it's a very subtle thing. It's a one year, two year, three year kind of situation. Whereas in life insurance, you uh, you buy it for uh, I mean 25, 30, 40 years. I mean yes. a, a 10 year kid if takes for 60 years, uh, it's around 50 years of this thing. Uh -huh. So all the estimates. I mean the, all the profits are based on estimates, actual estimates. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of futuristic assumptions and all. So there, what the management is saying in terms of data. And what has been their track record in terms of achieving that whatever projection they did, that is very important. Mm -hmm. And scale is of utmost importance. So reputation and scale. And uh, so in that we have uh, two companies like uh, Max HDFC. I'm just saying one as 11 11 and a half percent. Then you have uh, ICICI Pro another 11 and a half percent. Then you have the SBI uh, Life, which is another 10 percent. These three have clearly got they a different leg. They have different, an edge. different leg. And in India, one of the more added advantages is that there is a value migration mm. from a complete 100% PSU LIC yes. to they are losing continuously share, yes. and which is very healthy also. Yes. It, uh, so they have become about 50%, and private sector has become 50%. So as we go along, like banks, uh, uh, most likely public sector will keep losing the edge, mm. and as the prosperity increases, the acceptance of insurance, and we are grossly underinsured uh, kind of a country. Mm. True. So uh, as that no, uh, it's a and youngest country, mm. best for the insuring. So, a lot of these forces, demographic profile, the rising income levels, and then uh, you have the value migration where the one of big player is vacating the space. And within private sector also, it is consolidating. Mm. You know, mm. so I think it makes a very strong case for uh, having 
private sector insurance companies in your portfolio. Right now, they they look to be pretty expensive for their current uh, the thing. But uh, uh, I mean, if you see today's LIC's number, if any one of them were to reach after <laughs> ten years, also those numbers. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. government is looking at taking GICs of the world public, so the sector is getting created. Yeah. So, okay, closing comments. Last uh, you know question. We've really overshot uh, our time limit. We've extended appointment with you. We're talking about Buffett's newsletter. Yes. But I also know that you write a newsletter. Your desk writes a newsletter. <laughs> so if you have to summarize your AMC's activity in a simple newsletter form, that what you did last year, what you bought, what you've sold, and where do you see growth for next two or three years, <laughs> how would you like to summarize a newsletter from your desk? Let's say if you write a newsletter. Uh -huh. and remember what Buffett said, you have to make it simple. Yes. Imagine your you know, wife is reading it. So you have to make uh -huh. it simple for our viewers. Uh -huh. Let's talk about that newsletter. Uh -huh. So, I mean, um, we keep writing every quarter. By right, we call it by right set type yes. newsletter. Yes. BRST newsletter. I, I I do enjoy reading it. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. So let's say if you do write it for what you did last year and what you propose you would be doing for next two or three years. Hmm. So you know uh, this uh, see uh, because of wealth creation studies. See my thoughts are shaped by my own thoughts are shaped in investing by my well own wealth creation studies. So this year we have done after doing 20 studies on uh, what to buy. We have done this study on how to buy. Yes. So, if you go through that Kelly's formula yes. and uh, things like that, what really matters is to create an edge. Because see, the, you, ha you have to create advantage to beat the market. Okay, one is that you have to beat the market and you have to beat the peer set. Now, how do you do that? So, you have to create edge in understanding the companies. Okay, because price is there to everybody. Yes. There is no, not much of advantage in that. Now, there are two types of advantage you can create for yourself. One is the information advantage and set, second is analytical advantage. advantage. Now, information advantage, thanks to internet, is just closing down one by one. Yet, there is a lot of merit in meeting the management, meeting the ex-employees, mm. meeting the dealerships, and uh, really looking at the product and things like that. So, there, of course, the uh, information, to some extent, is going to help, but that edge is clearly coming down. Earlier, insider trading was there. After one year or 15 months, you used to get the copy of balance sheet. Today, you are getting electronic copies right there. You are doing a lot of you know, like uh, information is available to all. Yeah. All, I mean, the click these channels, yeah. I mean, they're doing a wonderful job of reaching out to the management, asking tough questions. So, information side is done. But analytical side still remains the prowess of the people who have the frameworks. How to look at competition, how to look at terms of trade, how to look at uh, uh, demographics. So, the whole lot of things, how to look at quality, how to look at the management, what are the characteristics you should look for the management. So, and how to look at valuation, what are the mathematics of compounding. I think if you ask me one thing, one one uh, title they have not given to Warren Buffett is King of Compounding. Yeah. He is ultimate guy in compounding. But a Buffett newsletter also talks about what he's bought and what he's sold. So if you have to yes. summarize the part two of your newsletter, <laughs> <laughs> he's not savvy, you know, regulated guy. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I'm just Thank trying to understand the thought process here. For example, I'm just trying to understand the thought process here. Let's not talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. Stock stock here, needs, but, but you yeah. can give me a thought process of the construct of your portfolio for next three years in terms of a weightage. Yeah. You can give me a sense of where are the pockets you're looking at, you know, reducing your ownership. Yeah. I'm sure when yeah. you look at a portfolio, yeah. it has to be a combination of both buying and selling. Yeah, yeah. So, see, we will always have 20 stocks, 20, 21 stocks. So, obviously, if I add three stocks more, uh, three stock has to be chucked exactly. out. So, exactly. uh, portfolio is very strategic sure. if you look at it. I mean, if you look at six months back portfolio and today you said, Ramdev, you have done nothing and why have you charged me fee? Something <laughs> like that, okay. <laughs> but uh, there is a lot of change. <laughs> One or two <laughs> names will change and allocations will change. Allocations are very dynamic. We can go from 3% to 9% and 9% to 3%. So, those things keep happening, which is as much as selling. Like, as I said, Indigo, we started with nine half. Day one, I bought, we, we as a fund house, we bought, we are so bullish. We bought literally everything. Okay. And then uh, we realized that, uh, and the stock just flew. So, there are a lot of very interesting companies which are getting listed uh, in next uh, 12 months. Um, I mean, the first time you will get to see. Uh, retail and, company going public. Uh, retail going public. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. <laughs> so That's a no -brainer. About it. No, no, no. You will get a lot of no-brainers. This is, of course, uh, hyped up big time. Yeah. Uh, so, you have to pay the price for the hype. <laughs> Okay, uh, but uh, stock exchange, you know, the world's one of the most promising stock exchanges yeah. coming up for very yeah. large IPO, hopefully in this year. And then many more, little less known company, but uh, probably they will have a franchises which are as powerful. Mm. See, we have to figure out where is a strong franchise is there and growth is ahead because every, uh, all the new banks, a lot of MFI banks, a lot of uh, our, uh, our one, of the, one of the small finance bank will also yes. come up. Yeah. I would think that is even more promising to me than uh, anything. So, where you have an edge, 
in terms of understanding the business and understanding the management. What happens is business broadly everybody understands. You know, mm -hmm. once uh, in 15, 20 days because the business is business. But understanding the management and comfort with the management and what management can do, what is going on in his head in terms of what he wants to build because ultimately it is the entrepreneur's call, one person's call like uh, what is uh, Mukesh Bhai doing? He is building world's one of the most promising telecom company out of nowhere. So, if somebody is not committed to building something, how will you build it? You know, I'll tell you what is going in my head. I want to extend this discussion. What is going in the producer's head? Rap because you've extended the show. <laughs> so, I'll have to go by the, what is going in the producer's head. It has been uh, fascinating. Yeah, we can just go on and on. Exactly. Exactly. It's been a very intriguing discussion. But 10.38, yes. the clock is ticking. I have to respect the time. And we have to close the show. And thank you for stopping by. And thank no, you thanks. for extensively discussing uh, no, Buffett's news. There are some more points. We can take it out later. <laughs> yeah. Well, part two, maybe next After week. After the show. <laughs> yes. I don't have that. But anyways, with that, uh, it's a wrap on this leg of the market. Uh, thanks so much for watching this very special last half an hour as well. Hot stocks will take forward the action on the other side.